Good evening, grave robbers, and welcome back to the television graveyard. We are your TV necromancers, Laura Prince and Noah Houlihan. We have come here tonight to examine the spirits of past television shows, find out which ones could be resurrected, should be resurrected, and which ones should just stay doomed. This is a podcast in which we'll analyze the history, the hype, and the aftermath of shows that ran only one season, or only one episode. With me, as always, is TV's Noah Houlihan. $25,000 for William Shatner's Little Asteroid. So today we are doing a game show. Yes, we're back in the game show well. We haven't done a game show in a while. We are doing combination lock. Yes, this comes from us, uh, from our good friend Wink Martindale, because he's got a bunch of pilots on his YouTube channel. Yeah. And uh, this is the 2007 pilot for Combination Lock. So we start with our host, Ty Treadman. Ty Treadway. Treadway, excuse me. Here's your host, Ty Treadway. Andrew Victoria, Rico and Angel, welcome to all of you. And welcome everyone at home to Combination Lock. Which and is the most game show host name I have ever heard yeah. in my life. Ty Treadway. I hate him. <laughs> He's, like, do you remember in IT Crowd when there was a scene where they said someone, you look like a magician. Yeah. He looks like a game show host. He looks like a game show host. Insulting. (laughs) Except, like, his shirt is so unbuttoned. Like, my first note is button your shirt tie. Because I was like, I don't want to see your chest hair. Like, I don't, I don't care for this guy at all. His jokes are cheesy, and he upsets me. He is from New Jersey, though. Well, he is no J.D. Roth, okay? He's no J.D. Roth. You're right. No children were exploited during this pilot. So, uh, th- this does the thing that a lot of game show pilots do, where they kind of s- imply that they are like... Like, they're a couple episodes deep. Yes. Because they say something along the lines of... Now, the team that grabs more cash wins the game. We'll have the chance to play for our progressive jackpot, which today is worth $185,000. We have a $150,000 jackpot. But each time someone doesn't win it, we add another $5,000. And then this one's one eighty five, implying that... Seven days have already elapsed. Yeah, which is just not true. (laughs) And we're going to play Combination Lock. The way that this game works is confusing. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm going to do my best to explain it. A bunch of categories, air quotes, show up, but they don't mean anything. Like, the, the categories are like... I'm going to give you five key words that are available. Marilyn Monroe's appointment book. Nose job. Miracles. Nowhere. Speaker of the house. It's like, yeah. Okay. That's not a category. That's just an object. Each of them is one of the objects that will later be in the category. So, for example, the first one they pick is Marilyn Monroe's... Uh, Appointment book. They then say the other two objects are William Shatner's kidney stone and Warren Buffett's ukulele. Yes. And then they go, do you want to pass or play? At which point I go, pass or play what? What are we doing? (laughs) The idea is this, those are kind of like the answers to the question, but you don't know what the question is yet. Yeah. Yeah. They they decide they're going to play. I think the pass or play is, again, trying to establish that in media res. That this has been running for a while and you know how to play. And then he's going to explain it as they're playing. Right. It makes it feel a little more organic than having to sit down and explain to the contestants who have also probably been briefed off stage. Right. But I'm going to get a little bit more into it once I explain the rest of how this works. Once they decide they're going to play, they are then told the question. Uh, 
match each of these items with their price in thousands that they were sold at auction. And then they're given the numbers 11, 16, and 25. So like a combination lock, they have to put the combination in the right order. What cost $11,000? Marilyn Monroe's uh, appointment book, Warren Beatty's, uh, Warren Buffett's uh, ukulele, or William Shatner's kidney stone. All right, so now which one of those costs 16000 Which one of those costs 25000 You're trying to put the numbers in the correct order to open the lock. Yeah. So this kind of makes sense. Yeah. They get it wrong. And the host says, did they get one correct? And they did get one correct. Yeah. So the other team now gets a chance to guess, knowing that one of the numbers is correct. Yes, but not which number. But not which. So because just, which number would break the game. Yeah. So they need to figure out which ones to, to switch. Okay. So the idea is you see Kidney Stone, Appointment Book, and Ukulele, and you think to yourself, do I know anything about these items? If your answer is no... Congratulations, you're normal. You're a normal person. And you pass it to your opponents... Your opponent will then get it wrong, and now you'll have more information when you try to guess on your turn. Right. That's the theory. No one ever passes during this pilot. We never see that concept acted upon. No. So, it's just very confusing to me for someone to see like, okay, I know a lot about William Shatner's kidney stone. I'm sure whatever question lines up with the knowledge I currently have about William Shatner's kidney stone. Ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, the only way is if you happen to have, like, seen that on the news or something and remember it from whenever it happened. But, like, you don't even know that it's about the price of it. Like, it, like... the question could be, put these in orders by how much they weigh in pounds. True. Like, you know nothing other than these objects that you know you know nothing about. <laughs> it's just, it's such a ridiculous concept. Uh, and this is where he drops the line. 25 <laughs> big ones for Captain Kirk's personal little asteroid. Which is like, almost a joke. But not quite. It's right. just kind of a reference to a thing. Uh, so that's going to be how round one basically works. Is if you get the combination lock, lock correct, you get, I think it was $2,500. Uh, and you're competing with a partner and you get like a few minutes or a few moments rather to talk it out. Yeah. Amongst each other. Uh And I want to talk about this particular question that comes up. The objects are nose job, breast augmentation, and liposuction. Your numbers are one, two, and four. Put these items rank on the top ten cosmetic surgeries. As a question, kind of interesting. Like, it's something you can have a discussion about. Yeah. It is something that you know enough about to, ha- to discuss it intelligently, but no one knows this answer. Right. Uh, and what I find most interesting is it's one, two, and four. Yeah. So we don't know what three is. So we don't know what the third is. We never do find out. And we never find out. And the thing is... That's good game show host fodder. Because then he could say number three was... Yeah, and either actually tell us as like a fun fact or make a fun, silly joke. Like number three is uh, getting your wallet widened for all that money you're spending on plastic surgery. something, Something simple like that. Like to me, the setup of the joke is already clear. What Ty goes with is... We're going to lock those numbers in. It's a good thing this survey wasn't done in Los Angeles, so they'd all rank number one. (laughs) Which, no. 
That is not how rankings work. And these are already all happening in L.A. That's why there's these rankings. Like, the joke is just fundamentally flawed. Yeah. It should be noted that the contestants get to chat a bit. Yeah. While they're thinking. Which is kind of like fun party game vibes. Right. This, overall, feels like a Jackbox game to me. Yeah, I could definitely see that. And I did a little bit of research. There is kind of a Jackbox game like this. It's called Quizort. Okay. And basically, it is this weird kind of like team game where you are given different items and you have to put them in order. So the first item comes up on a timeline and it's man first walks on the moon. Okay. Where do you put that on the timeline? Okay. You put oh, it yes. I have played this. And then the next one's like man first works on AstroTurf. And it's like, okay, so I think AstroTurf came up out after people walked on the moon. So I'll put it over here. But I don't know by how much. And more items might be coming. So I don't know if I need to leave a big gap or a small gap. Or maybe they're right up next to each other and I need to put them next to one another. I feel like Laura AstroTurf- is dying to tell me I'm wrong about AstroTurf I, right now. I, I'm not- She's like staring a hole in me as I'm <laughs> desperately trying to make my point to just b- blurt out at me, no, AstroTurf came out way before we walked on the moon. We had fake grass way before we had interstellar travel. Laura just Googled it, and I want to say her face has changed dramatically. <laughs> Laura, when, when, what is the proper order of these two? AstroTurf came out in 1965. I was right. AstroTurf came out in 1965? Yes, before we walked on the moon. And we walked on the moon in? 1969. Okay. I was right. It used to be called Chemgrass. When was it called AstroTurf? After we walked on the moon? Let me find out. Yeah, it was after. You can get ahead and Google, but that's where the cut's happening. That's where the editing will be taking place. It was used in the Astrodome in 1966, still before we walked on the moon, and picked up the term AstroTurf from the Astrodome. Fight me. Uh, To to kind of put in some context of what (laughs) Laura's doing right now, she's super proud of herself. And when she's super proud of herself, she does this thing where she covers her mouth to be like, boom, gotcha. And she keeps doing that and then realizing she's on a podcast and her mouth is the thing that makes the words go into the microphone. So covering her mouth will make her victory lap unrecordable <laughs> and unusable audio. So she realizes that and throws her hands down very quickly. Just so you feel like you're in the room where it happened. Look... Noah has a lot to say about the gameplay, but usually I do the play-by-play with, like, what happens in the episode, but in a game show that's not important. And I just want to feel included, okay? By? Being right. Okay, then. (laughs) The other thing I want to say about the gameplay of round one here is... uh, Actually, there's two things. One, the crowd's involved, but it's not as good. It's not like the price is right. No. Where it's like, do you want to go higher or lower? The crowd's like, go lower, you idiot, it's lower. I swear it's lower. And the the audience member's like looking at for certain friends. Because the person who gets on stage is never the smart one. (laughs) The smart one's always the friend that doesn't get to play, who has to vicariously play the pricing games and watch their friend win a car. Oh my God. Uh, But in this... The crowd is, like, spiteful. Like, there's a moment where one of the contestants makes a guest and you just hear the audience go, No. (laughs) It's wrong. There's a beautiful spite to that. It's just like, they're not... They're not cheering for the people playing. They're just like, Nah, I would have been better. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Uh, Secondly, there is so much... Visual background noise in the yes. show. The way the 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 set looks is it's these two teams of two 
in front of a podium and behind them is a giant vault. Yes. That they're going to open with a combination lock. And whatever they did to make the vault has some wacky pattern on it that the camera doesn't like. So it's constantly like fizzing in and out of focus. As are the contestants' shirts. Yeah. Like one guy's wearing like a striped button-up shirt. Literally what you're not supposed to wear. Yeah, it's like rule one. (laughs) And I would think any game show, specifically for men especially, would just have a rack of plain shirts. Yeah. In varying sizes and been like, look, if you can't, if the camera doesn't play nice with your shirt, here, here's a plain maroon button down you can wear or whatever. So, gameplay continues. Uh, we could go through question by question. I don't think that that's needed. No, and I don't think, like, that's why I, that's why I wanted to ask your turf. I want to feel included. That's usually my role around here. Is to correct me? I mean, that's always my role around right. here. Okay. So we, we go into uh, the first commercial break. And this is a moment I love because it's 2007. Do you want to play Combination Lock at home? Oh, I did kind of love this. Well, grab your cellular device. Sponsored by Singular Wireless. Sponsored by Singular Wireless. If you guys are having fun watching at home, well then just think how much fun you would have playing at home on your handheld or mobile phone. Here's how you can do it. In today's game, match the NFL team to the number of times it's won the Super Bowl. Text your answer to us at COMBO for a chance at winning $5,000. Stay tuned. More Combination Lock coming up. Oh, it made me so happy to see Singular Wireless on screen. And it was one of those, like, text 50505. Your Uh, answer to some random question for a chance to win. In the late 2000s, we were in this weird situation where pretty much everyone had a cell phone. But it was a phone. Yes. It wasn't a smartphone yet. And there were a lot of people with cell phones without computers. Yes. And if you hit the internet button on your phone, your mother and father were going to kill you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You may as well just not show up when the streetlights come on. Yeah. These were the days, young children, of not being able to make a phone call until after 9 o'clock because you had free nights and weekends. And to call before 9 o'clock would d- use your minutes. Yeah, you had to call after 9, mm-hmm. nights and weekends. But, and, and some people had to pay for tech. You know how it says standard messaging rates apply, children? Yeah. Uh, that's because you used to have to pay by the text message. Mm-hmm. It used to be a dime. And... Sometimes you would go over the limit because you could get a, a plan where yeah. you had X number of text messages a month, which, by the way, the average person would clear what was on that plan in like three days now. Mm-hmm. I went over this horrifically one month. I don't know. Oh. It got into me. Uh, I just drunk on power. And then I was punished by my parents making me pay it and then getting unlimited texting. Yeah. I'll show me. Yeah, you sure did. Apparently my mom listens to this now, so hi, mom. (laughs) Yeah, there's nothing quite like spending a nickel to send somebody K. Ooh, you were sending people K? Yes, because we had to use T9. We didn't have keyboards. Like, it it still took three button presses to say K. Not only two. It was JKL. You had to hit, hit the five twice. And then send... Oh, 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 blam, 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 blam. I'm covering my mouth because I'm right. <laughs> it's one of those episodes, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Guys, I don't know why Noah's like this today. I'm cranky. So let's get to round two. Yeah. Uh, round two is different from round one. How, Lara? They just double the amount of money stuff's worth. Yeah, it, they do double the amount of money stuff. But also, they say there's no passing this round. Oh, but nobody, is, nobody passed in the first round. Well, here's the thing. It's a lie. It's all passing. Because what happens is your opponent picks your category. Mm. 
So it's like you passed in the first round. That's true. So now it's all about like, ooh, I don't think this person... What does this person know more about? Shaquille O'Neal or Whoppers? Which are real categories in this one. Did we mention the secret stash? Oh, no, we didn't. But Which is like they're... It's like the Jeopardy Daily Double. It's just one of them is worth more. Yeah. Like a shiny question. Yeah, it's... Actually, the opposite of a shiny question. Yeah, those are worth the same. They're just a little different. Uh, it's like the the secret square. Not, it's not like the secret square. Uh, there's one that's like worth more in like... It's the Daily Double with no betting. It's just, Yeah, it's just worth more, but assigned randomly. And like... It's supposed to be harder... But, like, it doesn't seem any easier or harder than any other question on this game. To me, it most resembles uh, the only connect question oh. that is sound. It's like, yeah, this one's just different for reasons. Oh, I hate the only connect <laughs> question you, that sound. You picked it randomly, so you deal with it. Uh, except it's worth a little bit more. Uh, questions uh, include... Uh, This is the only one that I thought was, like, kind of interesting, was the year different hamburgers came out. The Whopper, the Jumbo Jack, and the Big Mac. Yeah. And it was 1957, 1968, and 1971, which I could not believe that much time was in between Burger King, McDonald's, and Jack in the Box. That it took a cumulative 14 years. Yeah. I, and I can't believe it, in case you're wondering, uh, 1957 saw the birth of the Whopper, which mm-hmm. came first, and we didn't have the Big Mac until 68. And they did all open at a similar time, so it's not like the gotcha was like, well, Jack in the Box opened way later. Mm-hmm. It was not like they all opened in like, they all opened in the 50s. Uh, a team wins... Yes. <laughs> the, the 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 contestants there's not we don't learn of anything interesting really about them. Like I don't even remember them doing a like Nicole, you're so you're in finance or anything like that. There's one one thing we find out about one contestant is they there's one about the line of presidential succession and the guy knows it. Yes. And he's like I'm going to let you talk this through and then I'll tell you if you're right to mm-hmm. his partner cuz his partner hadn't gotten to say much. Yeah. So he was like, just confirm with me first, because I know it. Mm-hmm. And they do act, They do get the question, yeah. absolutely. So we right. learned that that guy's kind of a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you know about... That, that one, I think, was also the most common knowledge one, mm-hmm. to be entirely fair, of like, I don't think it's that uncommon to know that the Speaker of the House is next after the Vice President. Yeah. True. Uh, the way that the bonus round works is... You can attempt to open the $25,000 safe, which is three numbers. Uh, and if you fail, you get the money that you get, you made throughout the episode. Or you can go for the jackpot. Yes. But if you get that wrong, you lose all your money. Mm-hmm. So it's all or nothing. And there's four numbers for that. Ooh. And this is the, and they're like, we'll let you know what the the categories or the items are. The items are Titanic, the English Patient, Gladiator, or Schindler's List. And I was just like, score! So yeah, Laura and I look at each other and go, Oscars. Yeah. It's got to be Oscars. They then do like, they decide to go for it. And Ty goes on this long speech of like, Before you tell me your decision, I just want to remind you that unless you win the 185000 you will be back again tomorrow. Which is confusing to me. Because if you know you're coming back next week, unless you win the jackpot, your choices are try to win Mm $185,000 and possibly lose everything, or win $25,000 Come back the next week and try to win $190,000, which will give you over $200,000 in cash and prizes. So if for some reason you're just super awesome at 
combination lock. Your choices are try to win the big jackpot and go home or try to win $25,000 every day forever. Hmm. That's a, that's a mess up in, mecha- in the mechanics of this show. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you could just win, like, it would take a while for you to get the jackpot, but you could also, like, win $25,000 four times in a row, then win the jackpot, and walk away with a big chunk of change. True. In any case, uh, they go for it. And what do you know? The numbers are 5, 7, 9, and 11. And it is Oscars 1. Yeah. And I immediately am like, Titanic won 11 Oscars. Yeah. I remember that being a whole big thing. Uh, and then just working backwards from there. Yes. Because I know we were talking about, like... Because uh, we were talking about whether Gladiator or Schindler's... You were like, I feel like I remember English Patient winning 7. Yeah. And so then we debated whether Schindler's List won 9 or Gladiator won 9. Yeah. And it ended up just being like, okay, well, I don't think they won a lot of the act. I think they didn't win like all four acting awards, but they probably won a lot of tech awards. And we eventually did land on the correct answer. Yes. And uh, the contestants agree with us and they win the jackpot. Woo. And just typical game show like, oh my God, you did it. Woo. Credits. Woo. Yeah. Look at the money. Woo, credits, woo, we'll see you next time on Combination Lock. That's the show. Yeah. Yeah. Laura, your thoughts? Um, I think this is a fun show for what it is. I think if I was laying on the couch with the stomach flu, this is fun. Mm Mm-hmm. Like. I I think overall, it's a good game game it's a bad game show yeah like i think the fun of this game is kind of like getting to play and have the argument of like no nose jobs are far more popular than liposuction which is odd which is the but that's kind of like the fun is the the discussion and playfulness with your friends right watching other people have that discussion not the best, no. in my opinion. Uh, and there's not a lot of, like... The the host isn't great. Yes. Which is really unfortunate, considering. Oh. I, th- I think I know what you're about to bring up, because I saw this as well. <laughs> that this was not the first pilot of this game? This was not the first pilot of uh, Combination Lock, and I found this out, and I was furious that we watched this. Who was the first? I'll let you, because you found it first. Who was the first? Yeah, Noah did some research. Noah did, Noah did, Noah did some research. The original pilot for Combination Lock, the host was Mark Summers. One of the greatest. One of the goats. And unfortunately, we watched this one. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, we, we... we're considering that a different show because it's a different pilot. That's why we didn't watch it. Uh, but overall, I think it's a fun game. Like, I think if you bought it as a board game or as a Jackbox game, you could have some fun with this game. Yeah. But I... Uh, I think if this was like a New York Times game, like The Wordle or The Connection. Yes. Uh, because I used to be obsessed with a show called Lingo. Mm-hmm. Lingo's The Wordle. Oh, absolutely. That's why I'm so good at Wordle. Yeah, it's just Lingo. Because I was watching Lingo, like, all the time in high school and college when I was homesick or just had something on as background noise. So that's uh, that's the show. Um, to stay doomed for me, uh, I think there are better game shows. I think it makes sense that this was not picked up. I think it's a stay doomed by virtue of the game over rule. There's just... I think there's enough things... I think the core game is really fun, but there are enough things I'd want to change, like the host and some of the gameplay, mm-hmm. that it would be too different. Yeah, the final round is lame. Yes. Like, I think rather than being like, oh, there's four things, I think if you gave them, like, three combination locks to solve in 30 seconds, 
with three strikes. Something like that would be more interesting. For sure. And I, that's why I would say stay doomed by virtue of the game over rule. Because mm. uh, like a house, like it has good bones, but yeah. it's not there. I would agree. So I think that's going to do it for us here at Stay Doomed Studios. Uh, Laura, where can people find us? You can email us at the Stay Doomed Show at gmail.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Stay Doomed. And if you want to talk to me about how game shows make good board games but not great shows sometimes, I'm at Plus Two Comedy on Twitter and TV's No on the Instagram. If you're like at the end of a long day and you just kind of needed to be right about something, I'm at Priorities on Twitter and at Glitter and Glow Tape on Instagram. Until next time, stay doomed. Dear at Priorities, I really needed to be right today. <laughs> really badly. It's been a long day. Until next time, stay doomed. <laughs>